Good evening, everybody. Um, we're just allowing a few people to come in from the lobby in the waiting room, just en enabling the, uh, the large number of sign-ups just to navigate in time coming over. So we'll start in a few seconds time. Fantastic. So first and foremost, good evening. England Football Learning, in partnership with the League Managers Association and the League Coaches Association, are delighted to welcome you to this National League System Coach Development Series of webinars. This is webinar number one of four, Understanding Self, and we're delighted uh, that Luton Town Manager Rob Edwards will be joining us um, for a designated Q&A section as we uh, progress through the webinar this evening. Just in terms of your own reference, uh, from a housekeeping point of view, so the webinar is being recorded. Um, we've ensured that the participants that have signed up for this evening, uh, your cameras uh, and your microphones are off and muted respectively, and we'll be uh, you know, working with you via the chat function this evening. So in a couple of uh, moments time, we'll be asking you to find the chat function that's located on your top naviga uh, navigation bar. If you move, um, if you've accessed via a mobile or if you're on a laptop this evening, you might see it at the bottom as well also, but either at the top or the bottom, we'll be utilizing the chat function uh, as we progress through. Um, please can I also reference in terms of the fact that, you know, we've got an opportunity to ask uh, Rob tonight, his insights around the concept of understanding self. Uh, we'll be proposing the questions to him uh, through the FA's team of coach developers. Um, and we'll hope that we'll be able to uh, resonate with some of your thinking and some of your own insights and experiences um, around the non-league uh, and national league system game. So to start us off, um, if you please could find the chat function uh, and can you please outline which club uh, are you from and who do you coach within the NLS? So just as a bit of a start of a 10, please, just to get you engaging, get you interacting this evening before we go into the introductions, Please can you let us know uh, the clubs that you're respectively from and who you're coaching within uh, the National League system. So if you can find the chat function uh, and if you can start to drop that in, that'll be a real good way of us to start to um, link in this evening in terms of the tasks and concerns that you might be facing your respective level of the game and give us an insight into who signed in. From the FA's perspective this evening, um, just one obviously reference that we've got three Chris's on the call this evening. So myself, Chris Welburn, um, I work as a regional coach developer for the Football Association in the northwest of England. I've uh, been with the FA for the last 10 years and I'm delighted to be joined by Chris Bramall and Chris Lowe this evening. Chris Bramall, can I come to you first just for your own introduction? Yep, thanks Chris. Welbs, um, good evening everybody. Uh, great to be here. Uh, looking forward to... Uh, to the evening's proceedings and chatting to Rob. Um, similar to Chris, been with the FA for about 10 years, um, working in the technical division, England football learning, uh, working within coach development, um, also in the northwest of England. Fantastic. Over to Chris Law. Good evening, everybody. Uh, pleasure and a privilege to be with you all tonight. Really looking forward to uh, the session. Um, I'm Chris Law, or Lowy, as I think I'm going to be referred to tonight. Uh, I'm part of the West Midlands coach development team and also part of the wider FAPE unit as well. And I've been working with the FA for seven years. Fantastic. Uh, just want to make a quick reference as well. Um, I'm understanding that a few people are having difficulties regarding the chat function this evening. We'll, of course, look into that. Um, but when we are posing some questions for your reflection, where we were going to utilise the chat box, uh, we'll just get you to think about that in your own uh, environment and context in the first instance, just to probably try and help align some of your thinking to some of the tasks that we'll, uh, we'll work through. Um, I just want to take this opportunity now to provide a little bit of context and, and rationale to this evening and the direction of travel that James Earl from the National League system, who is the manager for their respective uh, uh, system. So if you want to pass over to James and just provide a little bit of context and ra rationale um, of why of the series, really. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, good evening, everybody. As Chris said, my name is James Earl. I'm National League System Manager at the FA. I've got the uh, unbelievable privilege to uh, have the role at the FA that really tries to support and drive uh, this particular this particular level of the game. We have a, 
a unique pyramid in, in football, and we're very proud to have that at the FA. Um, over the last 18 months, we've been working really hard on the first ever strategy for the National League system. And that strategy is designed to work out how we as the FA can support all parts of the National League system game, the leagues and the clubs and those that, that work and operate within it. And one of the areas that we recognised was uh, an under-supported part of the game, but also a, tr a really important part of the National League system and the football ecosystem uh, was coaching. So just an interesting fact to start the evening off for you. Uh, so at steps one to four of the National League system, there are 66% of the players registered at steps one to four at some point have been registered at the Premier League or the EFL. That just shows the importance that the NLS, the clubs and you as coaches play in that transition from and into the professional game. But equally, we know that whilst we recognise how important coaching is, we haven't necessarily done a particularly great job historically at the FA on how we support those coaches working in that unique environment of the National League system, be that working at step one, where you are pretty much in a full-time environment, right the way down through to step six uh, at, the, at the base of our, our pyramid. So tonight is the first opportunity that we have to try to address that support by trying to put on quality but relevant support for you as coaches working in this game, but also to make sure that we have a broad spectrum to really drive standards and improve standards of coaching at all levels of the, of the National League system. So I'm delighted that we've got the ability to provide these four webinars uh, free and supported by the LMA and also my colleagues at FA Education. But we also have a very unique opportunity to host two in-person events, the first of which will be an, the first National League System Coaches Conference to be held at St George's Park at the 12th of May. And we'll be uh, delighted to be able to give you more information about that in the next, next few weeks. I hope that you find tonight useful and it's the start of a journey on how we support coaches in the National League system. And I know there's a lot of you who are passionate about the role that you play in football and the importance of coaching is in football at uh, National League system level. And I hope you're able to join us on our other webinars uh, in April, May and June. And they also have got some outstanding speakers who I, I know will be able to bring some real uh real insight which is relevant to you working in the National League system. The last thing for me to say is just a huge thank you firstly to my colleagues at FA Education, FA Learning and the LMA for their support in putting on tonight's webinars and the webinars coming up in the future. But additionally, a massive thank you uh, to Rob Edwards for taking time out of a busy schedule as a Premier League manager to give him, give his insight and expertise, but also his experience of the life the National League system where he has had that experience and, and used that to, to progress his journey to be in the Premier League today. If any of you want to give any comments or provide any further insight to me directly, please feel free to reach out. But all that's left to me to say is thank you again for attending. Thank you for supporting these webinars. Thank you for all you do in the National League system and I hope you enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Thanks, James. Really appreciate the uh, the context and the rationale behind the wire this evening. So uh, just to build on that, I think it's really important that we provide a scene set in terms of the direction of travel that James has alluded to. We're absolutely privileged to be joined by Rob Edwards this evening to kick us off with the Understanding Self uh, webinar one of four for the webinar series. We'll then, as James alluded to, be taking you through a coaching craft webinar developing individual player potential webinar and an understanding game approach webinar. Aligned to those webinars, we'll be delighted to be joined by Danny and Nikki Cowley uh, in the second series, Neil Ardley in the third in the series, and then Ian Birchnell to close with the, uh, the fourth and the final one in the webinar series. We'll also be announcing as we uh, work into the back end of this month, the registration process for the event at St George's Park and also for a regional event that we'll be delivering in June uh, in Manchester. So please uh, look out not only for the remaining webinars with the links that we'll post towards the back end of this event, but also for the registration process um, and for the LMA guests that will be uh, joining us for the in-person events. Just to give you um, some outcomes for this evening, so the opportunity for 
you know, to really interrogate with the content from your perspective. So tonight's webinar is around understanding self. And we're ultimately trying to explore recognizing the importance of self-awareness and the ability to regulate our coach behaviors. We'll be examining the concept of understanding self. And we'll also be listening to Rob Edwards and reflecting from his own insights and experience working within the National League system and obviously um, currently within the Premier League at Luton. We'll be reflecting on the webinar uh, towards the back end and we'll start to explore what this hopefully means to you and your context for the remaining part of this season and beyond. So, conscious that we referred to the chat box earlier, um, what we'll probably do to get a little bit of your insight through, if, if at all possible, is if you can utilise the Q&A uh, function and just instead of posing a question, um, if you'd like to probably in, sort of like uh, engage with us via the Q&A section that some of you have already uh, found and started to use as an alternative to the chat function, please can you use the chat box to capture your thoughts around this question. So what does understanding self mean to you? You know, what would you say are the components? What are some of the things that really resonate with you when we use the term understanding self? What's some of your thinking in terms of maybe the content that we might start to get into in terms of the Q&A function this evening um, that we'll have with, uh, with Rob as we progress forward? So from our perspective, we're really keen to get a bit of an insight in terms of understanding self. What does it mean to you? What's the importance? How does it maybe align to our own philosophy, visions, values, beliefs? What are the things that sometimes have anchored with us from childhood? What are the things that we've built and learned and developed uh, as managers, coaches within the game? Really appreciate the engagement that's starting to come through in that Q&A function. And we're starting to see um, some real good insight that ultimately people are, uh, are dropping into that. So I really like the ideas that Kyle has shared around emotional intelligence I think it's an excellent point that uh, Marcus has noted here around how he comes across to, to teams and individuals. I think there's a really um, important point that Chris McDonald's noted around being self-aware and how actions can affect others. And ultimately, there seems to be some recurring themes around self-awareness, the use of language, um, tone, not only sort of like your internal actions, but what do they look like from an external perspective and, and how do we view ourselves? And then ultimately, there's a piece around philosophy and, and how do we view the game? We thought it was really important for us to start with understanding self this evening, because I think a lot of the foundations of our work as coaches and managers uh, start there and, and ultimately become the catalyst for our development in terms of understanding the game, understanding the player and, and, and ultimately developing our coaching craft. From our perspective, what I wanted to do was probably give you uh, how we perceive it to build on some of your discussions and thoughts that you've put into the Q&A function. From our perspective, coaches need a strong awareness of character, motivations and behaviours in order to have a positive impact on others. And what I'd like to do at this point um, is I'd like to bring in uh, Brams, if, if you would, just in terms of your own example here, Brams, in terms of what does understanding self mean to you? Yeah, thanks, Welbs. Um, just been having a look through the chat as well. Um, and I think it, something that resonated with me, I think it was an, an anonymous, so I can't tag it to anybody's name, unfortunately. Um, but for me, the first thing that sprung to mind was around the sort of impact on others and relationships and rapport with, the, with your players and, and really <clears throat> understanding their needs and wants. Uh, and I think if I reflect back, I think I was definitely guilty of superimposing my my thoughts, my feelings, and that was represented in my actions and my expectations of the players that maybe should um, have the same or similar expectations um, that I had. Um, and then reflecting back on that now, it's around actually people People are in this for different reasons. People have got different things going on in their lives. And it's having that appreciation of, of, of the, the player as a person, I guess, um, for me. That's one that stood out for me with this with this piece around understanding self, it's that, you know, what are the people there for? What's going on in their lives at the moment? Um, yes, they're there as a player, but, you know, they're there as they're a person as well. So that rapport relationship and knowing them as individuals was was a crucial one for me. Great. Thanks, Brams. Um, Lowy, over to you. Your thoughts, interpretations. Thanks, Um Yeah, sort of in terms of understanding myself, what, what comes to mind is about understanding why I coach. 
and then a previous world why I why I became that PE teacher. And then it goes back to the factors related to upbringing, my family, you know, role models, mentors, those people who had a positive impact on me uh, and sort of shaped my coaching behaviours, my values. And obviously those evolve over time, but I think it's about being authentic as well to yourself and what you really stand for and ultimately what your your motivations, your behaviours and how that comes across in your coaching philosophy and your coaching behaviours. Brilliant. Thanks, Louis. And probably just from my perspective, thinking about the practicalities of the role in terms of understanding self and maybe aligning that to the MDT team that we, we build as managers and coaches. So ultimately, probably big things for me would be, you know, you know, how do I sort of like unpick my MDT team? How do I, you know, build those characteristics around what are my strengths? And ultimately, how do we start to complement and contrast so, you know, is it uh, an option here that we start to think about how we anchor ourselves to people? You know, how can we get real honest feedback from people? How do we get trust from people? But ultimately, how do we get that level of, you know, where there is going to be some some challenge, there is going to be some discourse, there is going to be some thinking where we're probably not going to agree, but, you know, ultimately the intentions of the MDT team is that it comes from a really strong place, you know, that the trust, that there's a real honesty there. And that ultimately, we need those people to listen to, but that, you know, ultimately they're doing it to benefit um, the direction of not only the team, but the way that the MDT uh, team works together. So I think probably a little practical example there in terms of, um, you know, examples from the past around how do we build people to complement contrast us, but, you know, have that level of, uh, of trust and honesty as we progress forward. So really appreciate the engagement uh, via the QA uh, function. It's my absolute pleasure and privilege now to um, to introduce uh, our LMA guest for this evening, Rob Edwards. Um, following Rob's uh, professional playing career, Rob had um, the opportunity to start out at Wolves, uh, a number of different um, opportunities for development came there through, you know, first team and, and interim roles and, and ultimately, you know, a real good foundation of learning to start him uh, off within his coaching development. He then press, progressed on to AFC Telford United, uh, where we've got some real good, strong examples from this evening that align to the NLS system and, and ultimately will help us uh, interrogate his thinking about maybe some of the development and, um, you know, lessons learned, if you like, in those early phases that have stayed with him and, and stood him in good stead from that period. And then progressing on from there, again, back to Wolves, um, England Youth, uh, and then Forest Green, Watford, and, and now obviously Luton. So um, the next part of this section, we'll see a Q&A with uh, Chris Bramall and Chris Lowe. So I just want to bring Rob on screen, if that's at all possible now, and uh, and just thank him again. And I'll come off the uh, slide deck and allow Chris and Chris to uh, to work through this accordingly. Thanks, Rob. Good evening. Hope you're well. Yeah, really well. Don't like the sound of interrogation, though. I'm getting a little bit worried, man. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, Chris and Chris will uh, look after you as we go through. But yeah, many thanks for joining us. And uh, I'll just stand over to uh, to Bramall to uh, to start. Thanks, Wells. Uh, evening, Rob. Great to have you. I'm going to be um, posing you the first question. Evening, Brams. Evening. Good to see you. Yeah. Um, just picking up on um, on the discussions we've just had, Lowe, my colleague Lowe just sort of mentioned it in his sort of reflections as well. Um, just reflecting on your own experiences that have shaped you as a coach. Um, so I'm thinking of sort of family upbringing, education, obviously your playing career, and then stepping into coaching. Just can you talk us through some of the some of the experiences that have helped shape shape you as a coach? Yeah. And, and First of all, before you know, before I start, um, I just want to um, thank you guys for asking me to come on as well and say hello and good evening to everyone. Um, thanks for allowing me to to come on. Hopefully, I can shed a, a little bit of light on on, on what's going, uh, what you know, some of the stuff I've been through. Um, I um, yeah, I'm really privileged to be on here tonight, and I I, I always start if, if I'm ever speaking or asked to do anything like this, I always have to start it with that. Like, I don't know it all. I don't claim to know it all. I'm, I'm, I don't feel I'm an expert at all at the moment. I'm still on a, a journey myself and trying to learn as much as possible. So 
please don't take what I say as golden. I'll, I'll try and say things that have worked for me or things that I have learned, but that might not be for you. Um, so I think that's really important to, to start with. Um, yeah, but around some of my my experiences, I've been uh, going back a long way. Um, really lucky. I've got a, a really supportive mum and dad who are still together and um, and still with us and and, and supporting me. Uh, now, dad dad comes to all of my games and um, you know he's still driving me kids and my family around sort of all the way up to Newcastle and coming to watch us and everything now. And I'm, I'm really lucky. So I, I had an amazing upbringing. Um, really really good grounding with real supportive um parents and, and family around me so really lucky and hopefully we've been able to try and instill some of that same sort of stuff into into our children now um a little bit i was i was at aston villa i was lucky to be at aston villa coming through from about 11 years of age all the way through left to go to walls when i was like 21 22 I, I, again brilliant upbringing there um from coaching wise uh, and, and two years from 14 to 16 at the FA National School as well. I was the last, um, I was involved in the last court cohort to go to, to Lillishaw to the National School. So I lived with um, uh, like said, Jermaine Defoe and um, Joe Cole was the year above us. So I was really lucky. I was like training and playing with top players every day from 14 years of age. So I had a great couple of years there going to, to school and training with those players every day, almost in a professional capacity from 14 years of age. Um, I had to grow up quite quick, quite quickly then moving away from home and things changed a little bit, started shaping me. I had to grow up. I, I was a bit of a country boy coming from Shropshire, you know, family from North Wales. And um, and then you're, you're in the mix then living with people from from London and big cities. And so that, that taught me a little bit. And um, and then you go into full time uh, football, went into full time football uh, at Aston Villa. Um, working with brilliant coaches, Gordon Cowens, I worked with Tony McAndrew and Kev McDonald, who... Uh, very firm, but but very fair for for me and with me as well, and um, gave us a different to how we would be now with with younger players and, and players coming through, but some um, some brilliant experiences, and uh, and then yeah, went on to have like a somewhat of a career. But I did my ankle quite badly when I was twenty. I just got into the first team at Villa, and um, I managed to sort of scrape a bit of a career out then, and uh, and retired when I was thirty. Um, so loads of different experiences and loads of loads of things within that playing time and and um and family that have, have played a big part in sort of me being to this point now. I think they sort of shaped me in the end and what I talk to to our players about new players and new group, if I'm speaking to a new group, the things that I really come back to now are, are what we're gonna try and give to our players. Um and the three things come back to the, the, the are honesty, respect and time. Um I think all players, all people, staff, everyone wants that honesty. Um, I think about someone I worked for, Mick McCarthy, I think was the best at that, played played under Mick at Wolves and was the most honest man. I think we'll all know that from how he comes across in the media as well. Um, you have so much respect for him because you know where you stand with him. Uh, and you can be honest without being really cruel now. I think you can be honest without having to cane anyone. Um, there's ways of doing that. Um, respect because I think that's so so important everyone's journey has been different everyone's journey to get to this point has, has been different but everyone deserves respect I don't think now you know the old saying where everyone needs to be treated the same or I, I don't I don't believe in that I think people can be treated differently you need to get to know people whether that's staff whether that's the players and how what they need not every player wants a handshake or a hug um, they might just you might just be alright with a hello how are you um, so I think understanding that is really important and then time whether that's a coffee, whether that's some analysis, whether that's extra work on the grass, whether it's just a chat, a phone call, a text. But I think time is really important as well. So I think sort of still shaping things, and but that that's sort of where I'm at at the moment. But I think it all comes back to to having real support, you know, in, in my my upbringing from, from brilliant parents who've sort of instilled some really good beliefs into me. And... Um, and and yeah, those those three things always sort of come back, and that that's what resonates with me most. And I think if we try and live by that, that rubs off on everyone else within the club. Yeah, great. What about your experiences from education, Rob, and from sort of schooling? Obviously, you had a bit of a different experience going at fourteen to Lillishall, but in in the run up to that period, from sort of a a PE and a sport sort of perspective, did you have any sort of? Can you trace back any influence from from some schools and teaching? No, um, I mean, I loved PE and I loved um, 
that was it was my favourite subject. It probably was for most of us. I would have thought on 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 this now, but uh, no huge influences um, when I was young. Uh, you know, at school, um, it was um, I didn't I didn't mind I didn't mind school. I went to uh, a school called Thomas Telford. Um, the first three years of secondary school, um, very new school at the time, and um, and put a lot of uh, time and, inf and 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 a lot of money and everything into the, the especially the PE side of it as well, and and really celebrated doing well in in, in all forms of uh, physical activity. So I love the competitive nature of the school, um, and I think that 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 really resonated with me as well. But you know. Um, moving then into moving on to Lillishaw and living with 15 or uh, you know and 16 lads above so 31 of the lads who are ultra competitive and very very driven um, you, you know you, you're mixing it then sort of straight away and every day is a is a competition and then around that you know really big influences then in my real coaching um, sort of as I was a player from from um, Keith Blunt and Kenny Swain, who are our coaches at, at Lillishaw, who were, who were big influences then, and Tony Pickering as well, who was like the almost like our second father in a way, because we're living away from home. So I think the older I got, probably a few more influences in, but not so much at school. Although I loved, I loved to be and engaging in all of that. Great, thank you for that. I'm going to pass you to my colleague Lowy now, who's going to take the next question. Good evening, Rob. Thanks for the opportunity Hello. to speak to you. Uh, normally on a Monday night, I'm coaching my sons under 14 team, so it's, uh, it's nice to have a night off. Um, a <laughs> uh, key part of self is uh, sort of your knowledge and skills. Um, now, you touched upon sort of some key values of yours of sort of honesty, respect and, and time in the previous question. Have, have those always been your core values and beliefs? Um, no, I think as I've thought about it more and what works for me and I try to um, think about what's important. Everyone will have their own views on on what's um, what's really really important for them to try and operate a, uh, and be successful and get the. Uh, ultimately, we want to try and get the best out of our our teams, our staff, our our players. But I always try and bring it back to the you know the human beings with human beings first. Um, that human side is really important. Someone had mentioned empathy. They were talking about. Um, um, about at the very beginning of the of the call then I think empathy is is huge and trying to trying to listen to what what is you're actually saying uh, and that can be really difficult and challenging at times low as well because you know it's a high pressurized situation we all want to try and win football matches so that can be difficult yeah would you say those those sort of values and beliefs have evolved over time and do external pressures have have any effect on them I'm sure they do they have evolved, but it's something I've been quite consistent with now for the last few years. So since going in at Forest Green, my first meeting with the players and the staff there um, was around what you're going to get from me and and, and and my staff and my assistant, Richie Kyle at the time, um, rather than just straight away going in and saying, this is what I want from you. Because I think people will respond better to hearing, OK, you know, he's, this is what he's going to give us first. Um, and then we can talk about how we want to try and work together. So, so those three things have been... Have been really um, important for me in the, the you know the third year of actually doing this job. I suppose in the um, in the football league. Um, I, so I thought I think over the first I don't know five or six years of me coaching and doing those different roles that we we touched on at the beginning, it, it kind of evolved and um, I sort of shaped it to that point. And it seems to work for us at the moment. I think honesty and respect are two things that are every person wants, you know, whatever job you're in, whatever walk of life you're in. Um, and I think that works really well. You ask a player, uh, what do you want from me? The first thing they'll say is honesty. But a lot of that's 99% of the time in my experience, that's what they want. Yeah. Do you have any, do you find yourself having any, having any sort of biases towards certain values and beliefs or players that sort of resonate with those core values and beliefs that you have? That's something that's really evolved. That's that's a really interesting one, I think, though, because I think um, at the beginning and for the first few years of 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 coaching, especially in the under 18s, where you could have, um, you know, the, the kids they're still growing up, they're still developing. I would take things personally if if maybe someone might be looking the other way if I was trying to make a coaching point or 
um, maybe if they wouldn't look in my eyes, you know, when I'm chatting to them one-on-one -on -one and things like that. And, and over time you realize you do courses, you realize that, that everyone's different and they might not, you know, somewhat they might've been brought up where they, they, they've not been able to look into their dad's eyes. And, uh, you know, that it, it might be disrespectful. I don't know. So I, I've, over time, I've realized that everyone's different, you know, and just because someone's not looking doesn't mean they're not listening. Uh, and I've tr that's probably calmed me down a little bit as well. I've not been as confrontational or, and it's probably allowed me to just, uh, you know, keep a clearer, to keep a clearer head when I'm trying to work. So I think, you know, by trying to stay calm and choosing your battles, I think is really, really important. Um, but yeah, I think now I realize that, I think that's the biggest thing that, that again, everyone's different and everyone's got to this point or everyone, everyone's now at Luton Town where I'm working, you know, in, in a different way, different experiences, different, they've, they've, they've got different values as well. So trying to almost bring that together, you've got to realise that some people are going to act a little bit differently and I don't take that personally. I don't think people are trying to not be respectful or not be honest. And um, But at the beginning, with what, especially one or two characters, well, yeah, I'd... I'd, I'd uh, <laughs> Try off the handle quite easily, yeah. so now I'm probably a little bit more, a bit more chilled with it. Yeah, it's such an important skill, isn't it, to to realise that people are different and and not yeah. be stuck in your ways yourself. So that's mm -hmm. really refreshing to hear. Back to uh, back to you, Brams. Thanks, Larry. Um, yeah, it's interesting that Rob just listening in there. It's you know we assume this game of football is all about the the technical, the tactical, and the physical sort of fitness of our players, but actually it's much more than that, isn't it? As you've alluded to. It's it's huge, and and I think I remember being on my, my B license and um and going away with a lot of new coaches or you know want to be coaches and people that were starting that journey. Um, it was just after we I was really lucky to be involved in a couple of promotions at Blackpool and at Norwich, and that made me think oh, I'd, I'd love a bit of that. What Ian Holloway had done with us and what Paul Lambert had done at, at Norwich, and I, this is what I want to do. So I got onto my B license and I remember, you know, you chat and you're in the bar with people, aren't you? And and it's great. And everyone's chatting. Everyone thinks they're going to be the next Pep or Jurgen. And 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 over time again, I sort of realized that, okay, well, I'm 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 not going to be Pep. That's my skill sets are different to his, and I'm not going to be Jurgen. I've got I'm not got his presence or whatever. So I've got to be different again. And um, you try and work out what 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 you are and try and be the best in what you are, what I am. Um, because everyone thinks they're going to be an everyone's an ex an expert. Everyone, you know, everyone watched that game yesterday. What a game that was yesterday! Everyone's an expert. Oh, why is he doing that? Why is he doing this? But we all—it's just the mad game of football, which yeah. quite often it is. So, um, yeah, it's, I think starting to understand and and, and be um, and be yourself. I think authentic. Someone mentioned as well that word. I think is so so important um, because. Uh, you know, yeah, you, you've got to try and be yourself because players again they suss that out so so quickly. And yeah. if you if you if you're saying one thing and then delivering something else or acting like something else, it it can be your undoing. Yeah, cool. Right, next question is um, it's one around sort of managing emotions, and in particular, I'm sort of going to try and get you to hone in on match day, uh, which is possibly the most difficult time to manage your emotions. You could argue. Um, so, just wondering if you've got any sort of strategies. Anything that you try and do? What's your approach to sort of managing your emotions on match day? I think, first of all, you know, um, I'm really lucky now, again, to be in the professional game where you work with the players every day. So you can get a lot of information across. You have a lot of meetings, individual work, unit work, loads of time on the grass. And what I found quite difficult at Telford at times was, you know, if we if if we played on Tuesday night, it might not be then. You know, we've seen them on Thursday night, and then we're we're um, you know, we're playing again on Saturday, and that was a massive challenge for us to try and then get the right meeting on the Thursday, the right training then on the Thursday, and then half of you are not going to see on the Friday before we play on the Saturday. Which I tried to, uh, as I'm sure most people will try and do, we tried to get some training going on the Monday and the Friday as well. With uh, we could get around twelve of the lads there. We had some younger players, some lone players, so we tried to get that going um to 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 help so if you, what i'm trying to say is if you can be as prepared as possible going into the match day then that makes me a little, little bit calmer yeah. and the more work you can do on the opposition and what you think could be coming allows you to be a little bit clearer with your sort of your tactical game plan i think and any sort of changes that that could come along or might you might be able to anticipate stuff um we as a staff try and meet and have a, a scenarios meeting um around 4 hours before before kickoff so um 
we'll talk about you know any likely sort of you know anyone who are who's got knocks who's got niggles whose loading's been really high things like that anticipating any kind of changes that might be forced upon us um and also tactical changes you know if, if we're one nil down one nil up or you know three nil up and, and try and and then you know lose four three I, there's a you know we'll, we'll um we'll try and work on all that sort of stuff and then or avoid losing four three and anyway we'll and then so we'll go through all that sort of stuff and i think then I'll try and make some notes, some key messages that I think is important to get across to the to the players. But again, recognizing that the match day for the players is really they're highly strung. You know, there's some nerves knocking about. It's um, it, it's trying to you know hit the right hit that right note, but but not giving them too much and allowing them to be in their own heads and have their own focus as well. A lot of them are just are, are going to be in their own heads and just thinking about surviving in the game. Never mind carrying out. The game plan and, and everything else that's going on so I think it's just trying to be really clear so if you can be you know prepared good planning and all of that sort of stuff and get your right messages then you can be a little bit calmer um and I, I always try and recognize that yeah it's it's about the players now match day it's not about me the staff or anything like that so try and stay out of the way as much as possible allow them to be in their own their own space um and then there is there's, there's nerves I mean I I was in the the our office um, before the game, and, and I'm sure there's loads of people on here that will be able to to empathise with this. I was in the office, and uh, my coach analyst was was in there. Andy Finley, he's a great guy, and he said he said something. I was sort of pacing around the office, and he said this was on Saturday. He said, "How are you feeling?" And I said, "I feel sick." <laughs> and I went, "You?" And he went, "Yeah, same." You know, and and you do, and it's getting to that stage of the season where the games mean a lot, and yeah. um you know whatever level you're at this was exactly the same a few years ago when I was at Telford and it was on the line you know I felt exactly the same so I don't think that ever changes um but not then really allowing everyone to see that I don't think you know you don't want to then come across as you know like you, you're in a bad way so it's right I think an air of confidence is important and again clarity with your message but it's all right to be nervous it's all right to feel that um and yeah, it's hard then managing emotions. We're all desperate to win. We're all really competitive. And then once that game kicks off, trying to to maintain emotion. I, I say stuff to the players like, and I know, I know this last few weeks as well, it's ramping up a bit. And I've kicked our water bottle the whole, you know, like the, the tub, whatever that holds the water bottles. I know I've kicked it and we conceded late against Villa. Um, and I've said to my players consistently for years now, whoever I've been working with. You know, I want you to be brave. I want you to take risks. We're human beings. We're going to make mistakes. Um, and I'm, I said, I'm human. I'll make more than any of us. So we've got to, as long as we learn from them, as long as we try and react the right way, I don't care. I said, and I say, you won't see me launching my bottle on the touchline or anything like that. And then there's me, I like 89th minute when we conceded against Villa the other day on flipping sky, getting, you know, kicking, kicking the, the bucket. Um, so managing your emotions in the highest, you know, the, when it's, when it's really on is tough. Um, but trying to back up what you say. And if you say you're going to be X, X way and you're going to behave in this sort of way, try and live by that as well. But obviously decisions and goals and, and emotions and things like that. Wow, it's hard, isn't it, on a match day? And again, yeah. regardless regardless of what level, I mean, it, it was exactly, I felt exactly the same as at Telford as I do this in this, you know, this time now at Luton. Yeah, I guess it's difficult, isn't it? Because you, I guess you're more under the microscope now with because you're in the Premier League rather than the National League, in terms of cameras and everything else. Do you do you feel some sort of pressure to sort of show that you care though? Because rather than looking all relaxed and not bothered, there's the sort of that issue where that supporters could sort of take that view as well, isn't there? Is there something sort of there for to consider it, it, as that's well? In, that's interesting. It's a really interesting question. I mean, I, I mean, I'm I'm quite lively on the touchdown. I'm always I'm always there. And I'm engaged. I'm trying to sort of help the team to a point whatever help I may or may not be giving I'm not um, you know I try and stay in that technical area <laughs> you can fail at that sometimes as well but I, I'm not very aware of what the opposition manager is doing and I know some of them can be very lively at, at our level as well and um, uh, you, you don't I don't think you're really getting into a, a war of or who's going to be the liveliest or most vocal or show the most passion or anything like that and still just trying to be myself you can get lost in sort of the game um, but it's a really interesting point. You're right. I mean, for us right now, there's, there's, everything will get filmed. Everything. So whatever you say, whatever you do, um, 
and and remembering that we're trying to you know <laughs> trying to be set good examples as well and, yeah. and and again that can be really really challenging um in the heat of the battle but i don't feel like i'm it, it's a, almost a trying to put on a i don't know whether it's a an act or um I, I don't feel that way i like to respond to the crowd at times especially when we're at home and try and engage with the supporters i think that's that can be important and we can play a part in that yeah um, you know, and I, and I, I witnessed a few weeks ago. Uh, you know, I think he's the best at this. Jurgen Klopp doing it at Anfield when we were one 0 up at half time, and then he's 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 had a go at some of his supporters there behind him. But he's Jurgen Klopp; he can do that. And you know, the fans will actually listen. They'll go, "Do you know what? Yeah, he's right. We need to get going. We need to get. We need to." And they did, and they did, and they they batted the second half. And it. So I, I can see how you can actually whip your fans into a frenzy and get them going and engage with your supporters. But yeah. But on, on the flip side of that, I know I, I've engaged with, with fans when I was at Telford and you can hear the two or three behind you even more. And I've engaged with them when it's not going well and that's not a good idea either. So like try, <laughs> try and choose the right moment when to do that. Yeah. You're damned if you do, damned if you don't, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Good. Thanks for that. I'm going to pass you back to Lowe. He's got the next question for you. Rob, I'm sure there were more than two or three at Telford. <laughs> not when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you right. you mentioned uh, you mentioned a chat with uh, I think you said Andy, your analyst. Uh, yeah. Do you get do you get any other sort of feedback? Probably a little bit more formal feedback on on your coaching behaviours. Not necessarily formal stuff now, but we'll we'll always review our sessions. Um, there's a number of us working now. I'm really lucky. I've got Richie Kyle and Paul Trollope as two assistants. Andy, who's a coach analyst who's out on the grass with the iPad, who can be reviewing the session as well. And we can lean on him and anything that we've got wrong or we want to tweak or change. How did that happen, Andy? And he can have a look at it. Um, Kev Pilkerton, goalkeeper coach. I've also got a uh, set play coach now with um, Alan McCormack. And I've got Kev Foley, who's a former player, who's... Um, uh, he, he, Kev's working with us every day, but he's responsible for our, our younger players that are in that in-between stage now between the 21s and us as well but Kev can really be involved in a lot of our sessions I've got a brilliant staff and I recognise I'm lucky there to work with a good number of people to to get you focus on this bit please while I'm doing this and you focus on that opposition please so they're making so they're doing this bit and um, and then we'll review it we'll come together we'll always watch it back and review the cert certain parts of it Um, I think that's so important to look at it back review my, oh, I should have I should have changed that. I didn't like how I started that. I didn't like how that bit went. Uh, um, should have added a transition here. Should have added an extra ball there. Um, I should have worked on that a little bit more. So there's always all that sort of stuff, critique going on in my own head. I'll make notes, but but also with Richie and, and um, trolls, we can be quite honest with each other now and say, oh, I think we, we could have we could have done a bit better with that. We, what about what were you thinking in, in when you were going in and speaking to him about going into that position? So. Trolls, especially, is he's ten years older than me. He's he's really experienced. He's worked at an extremely high level, and so he's always very, very honest with his feedback, and um, and that's important to me. But Richie's like uh, Richie's a life coach, so he's a couple of years younger than me. But Richie's been coaching way longer than me as well. So really lucky to have those two around me that can be very, very honest when we're when we're reviewing the sessions. Have you have you ever used or do you, do you work with either now or in the past like a mentor and what's they brought to you? to you and yourself really yeah Lowe, i mean i've got a few and i'm really lucky and i'm sure everyone again on the call will have good people that they can talk to um when i got the job at forest green the nma got in touch to say that we, we run this program that you can have a, a a mentor and um i was really keen to take it up so so john ward is someone that i speak to very regularly now when i was at forest green i was keen to to uh to speak to john and 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 learn a lot from him because he'd worked at that level, been very successful, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds to get thousands of games as you know, player, coach, manager. Um, I knew he was a really good person. Worked, I'd worked closely with uh, Keith Downing, and Keith uh, was worked with with John and and speaks so highly of him. So, so John is someone that I have uh, met quite a lot, speak to very regularly. Um, but then also other people that that I've worked with and. Um, like Scott Sellers, for instance, now Scott, I've worked with a, a Man City that wasn't on the thing. Man City wasn't a paid role when I first retired. I was going into City. Scott was the um, uh, the 
head of coaching there. Uh, I worked with Scott at Wolves as well for quite a number of years. So I, I really value Scott's opinion and his thoughts as well. I mean, tactically, he's amazing and he knows every player in the world as well at whatever level and and every age. And so, so Scott's another one. And I've got and I've got a lot as well. So I think this role, as everyone can appreciate as well, could be quite lonely at times. And you can be in the car and if things haven't gone well, um, you, you can have doubts. You can, you know, it is important to have people that I think anyway that you can speak to. And sometimes you might just know, I think I know what the answers are. And, I, you know, when you review a game, you think, right, I know what I need to do, that, that, that. If we can adjust those things now, we go into the next game, that can help. But I think it's really important as well to to, to have someone who, who's lived it before, who's been through certain experiences before and will have a different lens on it and someone's removed from it as well. Um, I think that's really key. But there's also things that I've gone through over this last year or so that that, that no one will have really experienced. You know, the, the Tom Lockyer incidents and things like that. Uh, um, you know, not not everyone that I would have spoken to will have managed, um, you know, half time, extra time. When you've got three players that are hanging off in the playoff final, a championship playoff final, the biggest prize ever. And you've got three players that are hanging off and you've only got two subs that you can make. How do you deal with that? You don't learn about that in the coaching badges. You know what I mean? So there's some things that I've gone through that have been amazing experiences. Uh, the other night, three and up at half time and then losing four, three. And then we had to bounce back and play, you know, two and a half days later is you know, incredible experiences where you can speak to people, but in the end, you've got to, you've got to learn yourself and you've got to get, you know, you've got to find a way as well of dealing with these things. So, um, yeah, it's, it, you know, the long winded answer. I've got lots of people that I speak to and, uh, and pick their brains because, and I'm really lucky to have that as well. And I'm actually starting to try and collect a few more as well as I'm going this season. I'm really lucky to, uh, Sue's on this call now as well, uh, who really looks after us, um, as managers, there's there's a few that I'll be tapping into this year that have just you know they're, they're, they're the best and and they know so much more than me. So it's great to be able to pick their brains as well. Yeah, you, you talk about the intense world of football and the the experiences you've gone through in the last twelve months. Is the people outside of football as well that you go to and and look after you as well? Yeah, I mean, uh, Dad, because Dad comes everywhere and he watches all of the games. My wife as well; they're really involved and they're right in it, but. My daughter actually probably knows more than me, to be honest. She she she's nineteen now. She's she wants to be a football player herself, and and she sees the game really well. So she always says, "What were you doing, Dad? Why did you change him?" What you know? So she she'll tell me straight away and be very honest. But it's quite nice. I think um, Dad, wife, will, will, it's it's nice not to speak to them about football as well, and just they know, you know that that can maybe I can part yeah. that a little bit, and maybe speak about other things and just life. Um, or the kids and, and and things like that. It's important to be able to try, as difficult it is, as it is at times, to switch off and remove yourself from it and be a dad or a son or a husband. And um, because it, again, I know everyone will be able to to understand on the call now that you can, you can live it and it can be just you know eating at you twenty four seven. So I think you, it's a really good point that you make, um, Loey, to to. Um, to have other conversations about other stuff and mates as well. You know, yeah. I'm lucky I've got really, you know, great mates who have been in the game as well and under and will understand a little bit, but it's nice to be able to just speak to them about other stuff and try and switch off as well. Um, I'm glad it's not just my daughter who thinks she knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> Brahms, back to you. Thanks, Louie. Um, right, last question from me, uh, Rob. Um, just thinking in terms of your own, and you've sort of alluded to this sort of throughout the call a little bit, so just to hone in it a little bit more, in terms of like coaching skill set or coaching craft, if we want to call it that, where do you see sort of Rob Edwards' super strengths? Um, so you, what are you really good at? And You might not want to sort of admit that, but please do, because um, there'll be some stuff that you're brilliant at. Um, but also what areas are you looking specifically to develop at this moment in time in terms of your coaching skill set and your coaching craft? Yeah, good question. Um, I think the communication side um, is my biggest strength. And um, along with that, hopefully, that's not just with the players, that's with the staff. So hopefully everyone's pretty clear on on what we're doing, especially on the grass when, we, when it's work time. Um, and I think that's probably due to a lot of my experiences, whether I've been... You know, whether I've, I've captain teams, I've been out of the team, I've been injured, I've been a player sort of hanging on and on the edge and thinking, oh, if I'm not at it today, I'm out of the team again. So 
because I've lived all those sorts of things. I think I can halfway. I don't know what the players are thinking because none of us do because we can't get into their heads. But I have a feel. I have a good understanding of what to say at that moment. Um, so, and and I think clarity, yeah, is, is there uh, with what I want to keep working on and improving. I think now is the level of detail is um is is high at, at this level especially as well now and i think being able to to nail that at the time at that at that moment when it's happening at 100 miles an hour whether that's in the 11 11 in the training um is is, is an area that i want to continue to work hard on because um i feel like we can nail it but we might nail it when reviewing a session and we have, might have to do it you know after lunch with some of the players or the next day. Um, but being able to sort of nail that little minutiae, little, that little bit of detail that could be the all important thing. Um, and that's even with someone out there who's got an iPad, who's reviewing stuff as well. And, you know, that's all of us as a collective, just nailing this little bit. And we'll look back at it and go, ah, that's the bit. Yeah. So it's just seeing that bit. And I just feel like the best, the best pep or someone like that, will, they, just, they just see the whole lot. They see the whole lot, almost like they're hovering above, and they can just see the, everything at that moment. That being said, I think we, you know, we've, we've been good tactically, and in the main, we've been able to compete well. But that's certainly that that those details now, Brams, are so so important. Yeah. Um, and I actually feel that I, I went away, you know, like I was saying at the very beginning there, when we all start our coaching journey, we all think we're going to be the next, you know, Cruyff or or, or Pep or whatever you want to say, but. And the details are really important. That's almost about tactics, 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 nexus and O's at the beginning. And then I felt like I've gone on this journey and it's become more about the person. And 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 I think it's that's obviously so, so vital. If I've got a team of people that are going to run for me and run for each other, that's more powerful than just a team that's tactically aware. But if you've got the two, then I think you can be really, really strong. Um, so the, the fine, fine, real top details now is an area that we're really focusing on. And if that that's in in and out of possession, now it's it's so key. Yeah, and I guess sort of the level that you're coaching at and working at now in the Premier League, that's those details become just finer and finer and finer at that level, that end of the game, don't they? Well, they do, Brams. I mean, the, the game's becoming so rapid now, and um, that was the biggest thing for us at the very beginning, getting to grips with the speed of it of it all, and um, things happened so quickly. We adjusted our training very very early on. And if we'd have known what we you know, knew after the first few games, we'd have changed pre-season as well. We would have done things differently. We had to learn and evolve very, very quickly. Um, and, and yeah, the teams now are being so brave and, and you know, people are pressing so aggressively. People are, are, are attacking so quickly that, that, you know, such small moments now deciding games. And yesterday's, yesterday's one's a great example of that in it now that... Um, you know, the, those fine details, those moments, reviewing our game back from the weekend, the transitional moments now, are so they happen so quickly. Um, and just your positioning of players, even when you've got the ball, you want to make the pitch big, but when you've got the ball, you've, you've still got to be thinking about that. You've, and I know this is sort of basic stuff, but you've got to be thinking about that what if, and because it happens to turn over, it just goes bang. It's, yeah. it's rapid. Yeah, Lincoln, you miss it. In terms of developing yourself, then, what would what would you turn to in terms of like resources? I mean, obviously you can, you can go on courses, but learning is not just about courses. It's the informal stuff. Have you, have you got books that you might pick up and read? Have you got, you know, a YouTube video you might go to and watch or how, how, how do you sort of develop yourself from a learning perspective then on those things that you might want to work on? What's, what's your, what's your approach to that? I like to talk to people and um, I like to try and pick people's brains on their experiences. So uh, again, mentors, other people that are in the same sorts of roles as me, again, at whatever level. Uh, and, you know, I mean, Paul Holleran, for instance, who, who is someone who's, you know, he's a legend of the, the non-league game. And, you know, he knows far more now than I do. So I can, you know, I can speak to Paul. Um, so it doesn't have to be, this is now, it doesn't have to be people I'm going up against at the moment. This is, this. these are people who just, they just get football and they know, um, they know people and, um so I like speaking to people, but I really, I, you've got to try and immerse yourself in it and get out of your comfort zone. And I think, try and, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. Nothing can prepare you. Nothing, I don't think, no kind of, no course, and courses are brilliant, but no course 
speaking to people, no book, nothing can really prepare you for it, like doing the job and experiencing it and living it yeah. and decision making under pressure. And, and it's, it's, no one can really understand until the, you know, you've done it and felt it. And like I said, I, I always, I, I laugh about it. And I use that experience at half time in extra time in the playoff final, because who's going to tell you how to manage that situation. You've got, you know, there's, there's three players who are almost saying, I can't carry on, but you've only got two subs and dealing with that at that moment, it's really, really hard. And it, and you've got a minute to do it and try and decide who you're going to change and why. So um, in the end, yeah, try and like you, you learn, you learn with, with your, learn from your staff and speak to your staff every day. I always ask questions. I don't, I always ask people's opinions before I make any sort of decision. Um but in the end, yeah, doing the job, I don't think there's anything else that can replicate that. Yeah, it's that experiential learning. You've got to be in it, I think, haven't you, to do it, whether you're a, a teacher or a coach or a, a dentist or whatever you might be at some point, you've got to sort of do it yourself, haven't you, and have a go and, and work, work out how to do the job yourself sometimes. I think so. Yeah, good. Uh, Loe, have you got to, one to finish? I have, Bram, thanks. Yeah, uh, Rob, uh, another key element of self is... Um, about maintaining and managing our well-being. Um, in the obviously working in the Premier League and all the pressure and the scrutiny that brings, how how do you go about managing and maintaining your own well-being? Yeah, it's a really important one, Louis. I mean, I I got to say because you know we're one of the smallest clubs to ever been in in the league, and I think there was so the expectation on us was so low and so different to what um, a lot of other clubs would be. I haven't felt too much of the glare, the outside glare and, and all of that sort of stuff from outside. Um, I try to remove myself. I'm not on any sort of social media. I'm not on any of that. And I try to tell my family to, you know, not tell me anything good, bad or indifferent. Um, so I've, I, I genuinely feel the same sort of pressure now as I did when I was at Telford again. And um, I don't feel too differently in that respect. Um but because I was in the same sort of battle at Telford, you know, probably this stage of the season as as, as I find myself in now, uh, I don't, yeah, don't sleep that well. Um, I do find it difficult to get to sleep. And then once I'm asleep, I'm generally okay, but sometimes I can wake up 10 minutes later and then I'm like, you know, wide awake and thinking about what I've got to do and who I've got to speak to and what about him and what about, you know, how do we defend Ireland or whatever? You know what I mean? Keep you up at night. And, <laughs> that will keep you. Uh, up. Yeah, and and uh, so that's tough. But um, I try. I think my biggest thing, and I learned again, learned this when I was at Telford, is getting some time with the with the family. Now, whether that's taking the kids to the cinema or going and have a kick around and kick about in the garden with my son, or um, go for a meal with my wife or, or, or all, all five of us, whatever it might be, try and get some family time. So I, I'm, I'm, I can normally switch off a bit then. And don't get me wrong, there's times where they're talking to me and I'm not listening and I'm thinking about something else and they have to, you know, tell me, switch on here. Yeah. But that's that's what I try and do. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, my ex, over the last couple of months, well, the exercise has gone out the window a little bit. So I've got to try and get exercising again. I've got to try and get, um, try and, yeah, focus on on sleep and making sure that I've got my energy. Times like this now, the international break helps a little bit. I've been able to, I, I had a complete day off yesterday, which was nice. Um, I, I, only, I only went through back through our game today. So I had, I, had a, I had a complete day off, went back through our game reviewing that today. Um, so that was nice to be able to switch off for a day. And it's important to be able to do that at times because you need your energy. You need You need to be the best you that's possible. And I don't think I'm, I'm I'm not great at that. I'm still working on that as well. But another thing that can help is being able to delegate and and, and lean on your staff as well. And I, and I have got brilliant people around me that I can lean on. You do that today, if that's okay, while I concentrate on this little bit. So I think, think that's really important. And I, I appreciate that not everyone on here will be able to, will, will have the, you know, the luxury of, you know, four or five then assistants that can come, you know, take sessions or do certain bits but um, but that's really important as well because you, you're right. If you're not operating at your best, um, then yeah, you know you, you can be struggling. So, um, it's but that but that is difficult and it's still an area that I've got to improve on. I've got to be honest. Is there is there any things that you've learned 
sort of any tools and methods to help yourself regulate sort of on the on the touchline? Um to stop you kicking yeah. those water bottles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that was God it, that will, I thought I was doing all right with it until last week and when it whenever it happened two weeks ago. Uh, I do genuinely, I think I try and stay fairly calm and I recognize that I'm not going to do anyone any favors if I'm going nuts, you know, and losing my head. I haven't been booked this year. I haven't, I don't go round with the fourth official. I know that the, um, I know their job is difficult enough anyway. And, and we all know that, you know, <laughs> there's going to be mistakes made, especially in the officiating. There's going to be mistakes made by my players. So trying to understand that. And because I talk about that, that makes me normally act fairly calm and regulate myself. Uh, and, and also realising that I've got to try and find a way, help us to try and find a way to win here. So if I'm losing my, losing my head, if I'm around with him over there, or if I'm not concentrating on the game, I'm not doing the best for my team. So... I think that's my, my my biggest focus is right. How can I try and help affect this game right now? Uh, and then just last little question that you know it's really nice to hear you talk so fondly of, of Telford and obviously now at Luton. Uh, in terms of environments, you know how have they sort of allowed you to thrive? What's been the what's been the key elements of that thriving culture? I took um, I look very quickly because I want to. Um, and I don't want to be sending everyone to sleep here now. I know you've got other bits to go after me, but Telford, I didn't get, I got so much wrong, but um, we we almost got it, we got it right and got it going towards the end, the last sort of third of the season. I listened to the staff and I, I, I you know, I was probably overcomplicating things. We simplified things and we, 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 I probably went in with too much ego and tried to overcomplicate stuff, overcoach stuff. And that's always lived with me. Um, so I was really conscious. And when I got the first, you know, got the next opportunity at Forest Green to make sure that always stayed with me. Uh, Lowy, that was important. And um, and so, yeah, sim keeping things um, simple. Got, remind me of your bitch. I've gone off piece there a little bit. Remind me of your question. No. Just about thriving environments. Yeah, sorry. So I knew when I took the job at Forest Green, so I wanted to make sure I did. Because Telford, yeah, it was, it was, what I was trying to say there was Telford was difficult and I didn't get it all right. And I don't want people to think that, you know, I didn't I know that. Um, but then Forest Green, what what really interested me to the role was the fact that Mark Cooper had, had five years before me, you know, done a great job. But he'd had five years, he'd had time and support, um, and I think that was really important. And that was important to me. And I knew I'd have a good relationship with Rich Hughes, who was the director of football, and I knew I'd get time and support. And I, and I get that with the people that I'm working with at Luton as well. And then in, in turn, me and my staff, we try and give that to all of the players as well. So time and support. If you get it, um, if we give that, if we get that support, we can push people. In and challenge people as well then and, and, and try and demand the most um, from people. But yeah, that was what really got me at Forest Green. I knew I was going to get some time and I knew I'd get the support needed. The one in between where I'd got 11 games, I knew I wasn't going to get the time and support there. And I think that, you know, I, that was a decision that I made to, you know, again, with probably some ego, I'll be, I'll be the one that'll be able to get that one going. And I wasn't. Um, so, but yeah, Luton, I have that again. And I think support, Good people, good people. It's everything, absolutely everything. People that are good at their job and work hard, um, and then you go half a chance. Yeah, and I think it just highlights the importance of the the uh, the importance of making mistakes and learning from them. Uh, exactly. And everything you just spoke about comes back to those three things that you you know you talked about, and it really resonated with me about you know, time and respects and what you just talked about there, learning from your mistakes and how they give you a good grounding for the career that you've had. Yeah, and there's, there's loads, more to, loads more to learn as well. And um, and I hope I can stay in it for a little bit longer. But there's more I don't know than I do. And and I think that's important to to, to recognise that as well. Um, but yeah, anyway, I've, I've done enough talking. Yeah. You know, people are still awake and still with us. Amazing. Thank, thank you for the... Uh... The quality and the depth to your answers. Really good insights. Back to you, Welbs, I think. Yeah, just want to probably take the opportunity on behalf of everyone on the call, firstly, Rob, to say uh, a huge thank you for your honesty, um, a huge thank you for your openness and and that rich ability for you to be able to um, communicate, you know, your insights, your experiences, your learnings. It's been an absolute pleasure for me to listen, to understand first and foremost, um, and then 
take the option now after we've thanked you and, and give you the opportunity to leave the call and, and just consolidate with the respective uh, coaches on the call. So a huge thank you. Uh, really appreciate your time. Enjoy the international break and we wish you uh, all the best for the remaining part of this season. So thank you for your time this evening. And my pleasure and thank you. Thanks for having me. And if anyone wants to reach out, I'm not saying, you know, if I can help in any way, then please go through and Sue can let me know or Mark or, or Matt, anyone on the court, if anyone's got anything else that I can help with, then just reach out and get in touch. But good luck to everyone and uh, and all the best for the rest of your seasons as well, guys. Thanks, Rob. Pleasure talking to you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Rob. Thanks, Rob. Brilliant. So, I think the, probably the opportunity to listen, um, you know, the opportunity for us to interrogate our own thinking there a little bit in terms of, you know, listening to some of the key messages. There's quite a few things that I've scribbled down, I've noted, and, you know, things that have probably become really pertinent for me there in terms of some things to, to act on as we, uh, you know, we move into this consolidation part of the webinar. What I'd like you to do is um, be in a position to start thinking about maybe one, two, three key messages that, you know, you've really sort of like um, hit home with you there, that you've you've actually gone, yeah, I really resonate with that. Or there's something that you've maybe had an intention for an action now post-call. I just want to bring back um, Brams and Lower, who did a, a fantastic job in terms of probably trying to complement Rob's real openness with some, some questions to support some of the key messages that he was sharing on the call. What... What was the one message that resonated with you, Lowy, in terms of, you know, that one thing that's in your head at the minute that you're going to take away from? And believe me, there was a lot, but, you know, what's one of the things that you're going to take away from? I think how he spoke really early about having really good people around him, giving him that really good grounding. Um, they had a real, obviously had a real impact on his, on his behaviours, you know, on the brilliant basics that he talked about in terms of honesty and respect and time. Um, that that was sort of the the key message, and it was really sort of um, really nice to hear that you know somebody who's got to the the top in you know in the in the Premier League, he's he's still carrying on learning and evolving, and he wants to do it, and he's got to do it really fast. So it was about about the person, that grounding, and his attitude to never stop improving. Yeah, no, fantastic. And what about you, Brams? What you know, listening in there, what, what are some of the things that you've taken away? I think first and foremost, just to say, you know, what what an honour it was to just sort of chat to him. It just felt like, a, you know, a chat with a friend, really, and that probably just comes across at what a personal sort of uh, guy he is. And, um, you know, you can see how that probably comes across in his coaching and, and the successes that he's had. So just, you know, generally a, a pleasure to ask him some questions and just, and just get him talking, really. It was... Um, Really, I just really enjoyed it first and foremost. Um, secondly, just to answer your question, just um, I wrote down some of the stuff Lloyd just said, but one of the big things I wrote down that's, that's not been said so far, he said empathy is huge. Those were sort of three words that I wrote down and sort of underlined and starred in a, put it in a big box on my notepad here. Um, and he was talking about how knowing the person and knowing the player um, is really important to him. And that's where he was sort of delving into the, the sort of non-tactical, non, non sort of non ball related stuff really of of being a coach or a manager of a team. It's you know, you're managing a set of people ultimately at the end of the day. You know, football's just a game that, that we're all playing. But, you know, that sort of came across uh, massively for me um in the last hour listening to Rob. Thanks, Brams. Um and first and foremost, thanks Brams and Lowy to to you both really in terms of you know that QA section and taking us through. What I'm really keen um, to probably get an insight now from, from you via the Q&A function to capture your thoughts. So, you know, what have you taken away as coaches on the call this evening from the webinar? Uh, what does it mean to you? What does it mean to your coaching context? What are some of the, you know, some of the thoughts and interpretations now in terms of listening to Rob that you're going to probably, uh, you know, note down in the Q&A function here in terms of some of your thoughts that we can we can bounce off? Just while you're, you know, working in that that uh, chat area, for me, massive one was around that reflection in action skill. So if we're thinking about understanding self and we're thinking about reflection in action, that ability to, 
you know, see things as they happen. That reflection skill to not just for a session or a game or not just on a session or a game, but that ability to reflect in action was huge for me. And I think it was really important that, um, you know, we talk about sometimes when we've got problems against problems, tactics against uh, taxes and strategies and, and game approaches that, you know, ultimately when we're in a problem versus problem scenario, being able to spot things, see things, adapt in the moment. So, you know, a big one for me there in terms of, you know, maybe understanding self first and foremost around reflection skill, but then it help, how it helps complement game uh, players that will be working with um, opposition and our own in terms of some of the strategies that we might come up with. Um, just picking, uh, picking out a few things here in the chat box. So, you know, understanding my, uh, the, my behaviour and the effect on players. I think it was a really good point here that somebody's made around, um, you know, understanding yourself as a, as a person first before you start to think about how I communicate with, with players, how I communicate with the board, how I communicate with... Um, you know, my MDT team, you know, how I sort of like, con um, you know, conduct myself both at training and in game. That's just come up there. I think the, a real nice piece here that's been noted around ego. So, you know, ultimately, um, you know, Rob alluded to ego, alluded to, to impression management a little bit, if you like, in terms of reflection skills there and, you know, how he sort of like, um, you know, reflected on those parts of his uh, development through his coaching journey to date. Um, a really nice point here around people first um, and then the X's and O's will follow. So, you know, making sure that, you know, actually it is people first and, you know, X's and O's are, are massively important. You know, we're not saying that, but, but ultimately it's a real good point here that, you know, it starts with people and the ability to, to provide a real good uh, relationship and understanding with the players that we work with. Um, honesty has come out time and time again here. I'm seeing it flying through the um, the interpretations from from all of you here in terms of something you've taken away. So honesty, accountability, um, you know, behaviour in terms of you know ultimately who I am as a person and, and how best do I um, you know work within the situations and the context that I have in club and, and within training. And then culture, probably the final point from me, just to talk around there, culture being you know, potentially a product of, of values and beliefs. So, you know, Rob openly talked there about family, um, his dad's influence. He talked about his upbringing. He talked about, um, you know, a strong backroom staff in terms of an element of trust. So, you know, team intentions may sit with Rob and his immediate staff, but he's got teams and, and people that ultimately are deployed in certain areas to really create that coaching uh, effectiveness within the, uh, the backroom staff. So ultimately, I think who you can trust, who you can work with, who can complement, who you can contrast your thinking, some some really excellent points, um, you know, that were alluded to. So probably where that takes us to now is is an opportunity to, to signpost because as I alluded to at the start, we're, this was the first in the series of four webinars that we've had culminating with two face-to-face -face events that will... Um, We'll build both in May and June, respectively, at St George's Park and in Manchester, and details will follow. But probably just a real good opportunity here to, um, you know, as, a, as an end product of tonight, we'll signpost all the booking links again via the um, the National League system, which will go out to the respective leagues and to the coaches working in within those respective uh, environments. We'll also make sure that we follow up with you regarding the booking links for webinars two, three, and four for those who've logged on this evening. What I want you to to probably uh, understand here and echo James Earls, the National League Systems Manager's point of view here, that we've tried to build a real comprehensive um, webinar series built around key components and, and key areas of the game. So I think you can probably all go away from tonight realising why we started with understanding self. Um, for me, it's the foundation. It's the, uh, the bedrock. It's a real opportunity for us to understand ourselves as people, as coaches, uh, as managers, and ultimately how that then will affect the coaching domain, if you like, how we work with players, um, and then un finally understanding game approach where Ian Birchnell uh, will take us through uh, some of his thoughts around problems and solutions within the 11 side game. It's also probably worth referencing um, as a bit of signposting for you for, for learning to happen between these series. We've got Coach Cast by England Football Learning, and we've also got the England Football Learning websites with... Um, 
you know, with YouTubes, with sessions, with articles, with past webinars um, that you can go into at your own leisure at uh, any point in your own time and, and work through. And it probably finishes with myself this evening to thank um, a number of people, really. So I want to thank James Earl, first and foremost, for the uh, the vision, the thinking behind this coach development series for the National League system. I also want to massively thank the LMA and the LCA for their support, their planning, uh, the guidance that we've worked with since we uh, we started planning this uh, development programme just before Christmas. So a huge thank you to uh, Mark Farthing, to Sue, who was referenced on the call, uh, to Matt Stewart, who's been integral uh, and an absolute pleasure to work with. I then want to thank um, Rob again. So I, I'm going away with an absolute... Um, you know, a plethora of information here that, you know, probably I'm going to reflect on and impact my own development and self at a point where I think I'll be thinking about this for the next week or two weeks and trying to sense make and, and trying to help me uh, understand what it means in my context and environment. And I just want to thank um, Chris Bromwell and Chris Lowe for, um, you know, a, an outstanding Q&A section uh, that really helped uh, complement and bring to life Rob's rich experiences from his development as a coach. So on behalf of everybody at the England Football Learning, at the LMA and the LCA, thank you very much indeed for listening in. And you are now free to go back your evening and we look forward to seeing you on a webinar or a face-to-face -face event for the National League System Coach Development Programme in due course. Thank you.